Hello everybody. I figured I'd toss up a video here demonstrating the tile editor I've been working on for a while. I'm going to demonstrate how this editor can be used to design tile maps for a platformer I've been working on as well as how you can use it to design maps for a top-down RPG style game. So, as with anything, you'd want to create a new map. Now we'd want to load in a tile texture. And this is going to be the tile set we're going to use for the map. We're going to use this one for demonstration. It's just a tile set I picked up off the internet. Um, the editor loads in a tile sheet that is uh, a transparency enabled PNG file. Uh, everything has to be drawn out just so. Uh, this way it can be split up into tiles by the editor. Under the map settings here, you basically configure the height and width of the map as well as the tile size. Obviously, the tile size here matches the tile set. It's convenient, right? Uh, 48 pixels and 48 pixels here. Every map needs to have an identifier. Uh, that's for portals, which I'll get into a bit later. You can also set the background color of the map, either using uh, any of the predefined .NET colors or the color wheel, which doesn't really matter which we use here. So we'll go back to Cornflower Blue, save it. So we have a map. What we're going to do is we're going to start with just drawing some simple tiles in using one of the layers. We have three layers here, uh, rear, mid, and four. Uh, the rear layer is just exactly what it sounds like. It's basically the bottom layer of the map. Uh, there's really nothing special there. The mid layer is a layer that's drawn with transparency over the background layer to add a little more detail to your map. The foreground layer is, again, exactly what it sounds like. It's a foreground. Basically anything drawn in the foreground layer as long as your engine knows how to process the map file right, will occlude any player or NPCs that pass underneath it, which is pretty useful since obviously you don't want a uh, foreground layer to be behind things, you want to be in front. So we have a really simple map right now. That's all we really need for demonstration purposes here. So we're gonna next we're gonna draw in some spawn points. Um, under entities, because basically everything is an entity. Uh, these are dynamically loaded uh, text files. You basically dump in there what your engine supports. Right now, my engine supports water waves, which are animated waves for over water objects, which I'll show you in a bit. And three different enemies as a player spawn point. Right now, we're going to spawn a player. So we'll pick the player, spawn draw, draw a player. Done, player. We're also going to draw in a single enemy, this guy right here. And we're going to draw in some water waves over what is going to be our water object. As far as the brushes are concerned, you've got a, a bunch to choose from. You've got Tile Draw, which lets you draw single tiles, as well as Tile Ranges, which I'll show in a little bit. You've got Tile Layer Fill, which is going to fill an entire layer with uh, a selected tile. Erase Tiles, self-explanatory. Multiple collision types, depending on what your engine supports, uh, either no collision, a solid collision, impassable, different slopes, platform collision, ladder collision. You've also got hazard tiles if you want to make certain tiles do damage. Again, your engine needs to support it. Spawn draw and erase, portal draw, and effect draw. Uh, I'll mention portals right now quickly, as I'm not going to use them in this map. But basically, uh, the engine and editor let you draw in rectangular areas to be used as portals to shift between different maps. Um, we're not going to draw any in right now because if you draw one in and touch it in my engine without that map existing it's going to crash and we don't really need to make multiple maps for a demonstration but you can. And effect draw is what we're going to use for our water. So we'll use the, the effect draw brush, go to terrain effects and manage them. See here I have water and fog. These are both custom shaders I built for this game. So right now we're going to use water. We're going to add a water effect to our map and select it. We're going to draw it in right here. When I compile the map, uh, you'll see what that does. The editor, by the way, exports maps uh, just simply into an XML file to be used by the XNA content manager. Uh, it's really, really simple and human readable in case you need to see what it's doing. The last thing we're going to do here is we're going to draw some foreground layer uh, tiles. As you can see, these are actually yellow. Uh, they're not actually yellow, they're just tinted. Anything with a foreground layer is going to be tinted yellow so you can see what they are. Uh, you can turn that on and off using the view menu. You can disable the highlight. 
Uh, collision layer can be turned on and off. Hazard layer, and portal layer, spawn layer. In case you want to turn that stuff off. Water layer, same thing. In case you want to just focus on the art or if things are getting on top of each other, you don't want to look at them. And the last thing we're going to draw in here is some impassable collision. This way our enemies and player do not fall through the game world. As you can see, anything that is impass impassable is going to be tinted red. Anything set as a platform that you can jump through the bottom will be tinted blue, and so on and so forth. Different collision types have different visual effects, so they're easy to distinguish. So we have a really simple map here. Nothing special, but it's functional for our demo purposes. So what we're going to do is we're going to save it into the actual project for game engine. We're going to go ahead and close the editor. Visual Studio is going to let us know that we just updated that, so we definitely want to reload it. We're going to run the game. As you can see, I just killed this guy we spawned there. We have the foreground. I'm not colliding with the ground, so I don't fall through it. We have animated water waves, and as you can see, the area that is affected by the water um, is kind of moving around using my shader. And that's it. I didn't set the spikes to be uh, hazards. It's, if I did, it would kill me. If not, it doesn't really matter. As you can see, I can wall jump out, but we're not really demonstrating my engine right now. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to show you how the uh, how easy the editor is to use when you're using it in terms of just drawing a quick map.